My name is Zachary Nyange Um I'm happy to be visually impaired, totally blind and specific. And uh, I was born in Machakos, a place called uh, Tala, but then relocated to Mavoloni. Yes, but then currently I'm living in Nairobi, Kasarani. I'm a teacher. Um, I'm actually an, an educator on issues, disability, inclusion, and assistive technology. Currently, I lecture in uh, one of the colleges here in Nairobi. When I was born, uh, it was difficult for my parents because they never had interacted with any other person who is blind. <clears throat> but then I must say that I acquired it when I was about uh, seven years. That's when I lost my vision. It is claimed that it was out of measles, uh, that I was attacked and uh, the attack went with my vision. So I am happy that uh, they tried their best to find spaces where I can get support. And at last they landed to Thika School for the Blind. Um, it is in Thika. And uh, there I started my education journey, studied both primary, then secondary, left to the University of Nairobi. Uh, first, before I got to the University of Nairobi, passed by um, Kenya Certified Blind. I was fortunate to have um, computer studies, that is assistive technology. And um, though it was as basic as possible, but I've been growing all through to date, and uh, life is different. Then went to University of Nairobi, did my undergraduate, and later continued with higher education. Um, then from the University of Nairobi did several other things, uh, including you know, building my career, uh, teaching in several schools, uh, secondary schools specifically. Um, some of them may include St. Philip's at home, St. Philip's Matangine. Uh, in Machakos, that was sometime in 2012, and then um, uh, of late, of, of course, I went even back to teach Thika School for the Blind, and later now Alliance Girls High School, before I came to Kise. Mm, my favorite subject was and is English. Yeah, I loved languages, uh, both English and Swahili. Um, I also enjoyed uh, CRE, um, I really was not a great fan of um, history. I enjoyed mathematics as much as we had difficulties of resources here and there, but I enjoyed it. My mathematics teacher was um, uh, Mr. Mosau, my English teacher was uh, Madame Mwashi, and yes, I'm happy that they taught me. Today, they are colleagues and we interact and feel happy. I used to love co-curricular activities, um, especially when it came to a ball we call uh, goal ball. I used to play goal ball a lot. <clears throat> I remember it even triggered me to having interest on, um, you know, weightlifting and all that. Um, it challenged me a lot to also pursue other games like football for, football for the blind. Um, yes, there's an, also a table tennis version for those persons with visual impairment called um, Showdown. I used to play it too and I really used to enjoy it. Yeah. Of course, even running, running um, and oh, how could I forget music. I used to participate in music and drama. All this uh, actually ended up shaping who I am today. Um, I remember when I was in the university, I did participate in um, the Nairobi Traveling Theatre, you know, and we used to act and, you know, make people happy, communicate and, you know, create awareness on several issues. Some of my best moments, especially in my primary education, was, was um, when we did have um, f um, festivals, say music or drama festivals, because that used to allow me get a chance to exploit my potential, my potential I mean. I would explore it 
um, in different ways. That's the time that I would discover, oh, I can even learn piano, I can learn how to play a guitar, I can learn how to play marimba, for example. That's the time I could realize, mm, um, I could imitate this and that person, for example, or I could behave like a drunkard, and such kind of things. So that used to be my most enjoyable moments. Um, other sweet moments were when we were learning, we were doing anything practical. Anything practical, uh, say for example, in um, science lessons. My worst moments <clears throat> in primary school specifically were uh, during the times that I would want to do something but I'm lacking the resources. I remember some time we would share books, um, you know, a braille book, a braille book um, is, is heavy and a bit costly to produce, you know, a braille book like this is costly to produce for example so sometimes we may have few of them and then now it be it would be difficult for each to have a copy so we'd be forced to using um, um, a piece maybe five or six or even sometimes seven of us that was my worst moment because i wanted everything that is being read out that i participate i participate in um, in touching every word, if it is the word intervention, I want to, you know, touch and feel it as it is being read. I also touch and feel it too. So that was my last moment when I would uh, lack resources. My day-to-day -day routine as an, as an educator is far much influenced by uh, the institution's activities. But generally, I, I teach, I teach um, teachers who are studying a diploma in special needs in education. Um, you know, these are teachers who have already, uh, they are practicing teachers, maybe say for three or five years. So they come to, um, you know, have education to learn on how to support those learners with special needs in education. So uh, do you have several sessions with them there. Um, there are other activities like um, also coordinate a um, rehabilitation program where we support those who are newly blinded in or other, those who have acquired impairment. It could be either about uh, visual impairment, uh, those who may have acquired hearing impairment, those who have acquired uh, physical impairment and such. So we, we support them so that they get to know how to do um, things like activities of daily living, orientation and mobility, assistive technology, how to read and write braille for example and such. Those who are physically impaired we get to have them know how they can type on a computer maybe say with one hand and uh, such kind of things. Those who are hearing impairment we, impaired, we teach them sign language so that they be able to now um, know uh, how to communicate. Sometimes we may have lots of um, lots of activities to a point that you know uh, we even stretch um, apart from that there may be other activities say for example um, that i may be assigned by my boss my director for example i may need to maybe participate in some conference so that i may bring the report back to him or even um, participate in a workshop so that i can train other people who are probably interested with the services that we offer. That may not necessarily happen always in the institution, so we find ourselves traveling a lot uh, in different parts of the country and even sometimes out. I have for a long time had um, uh, outside Dr. Miles Monroe as my role model. Um, in here, I, I enjoy um, Harrison Nganga. Um, you'd want to be like me? Thank you and congratulations. I'm happy and proud of you. But please do not let be like me. Be better. The best way to be better is to make sure that you avoid those things that I may have done wrongly and make sure that you participate in anything that helps you grow. Become better than um, who you are yesterday. The easiest way to achieve being better than me is to compete with your own self. So you compete with what you've been able to achieve yesterday. 
So if you are good in running, yesterday you were able to run say um, 100 meters within two minutes, try running today the same 100 meters uh, for maybe say one minute and 50 seconds. So long as you shall have done 10 seconds lower than yesterday, then you do that consistently, you'll definitely be better than me. My name is Zachary and I am a king. Educator.